The first edition of the Lift Me Up Women's Conference celebrated the International Women's Day 2023 with women from all walks of life exploring the impact of the digital gender gap on widening economic and social inequalities. The event was graced with movers and shakers in the technology sector. This conference spotlighted the importance of protecting the rights of women and girls in digital spaces, which is critical for nation building. Bringing women into technology results in more creative solutions and has greater potential for innovations that meet women's needs and promote gender equality. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome the panel up to the stage. My name is Nadia Mutisi. I'm a final year law student at the University of Zimbabwe. I do a lot of volunteerism with Say What, a lot of digital activism. I am an SDG 3, 4, and 5 activist and an advocate. Ladies, please take a seat. Firstly, happy International Women's Day to all of you ladies. The theme this year is digital innovation and technology for gender equality. But what we're going to be discussing in this particular panel discussion this morning are the realities of access to information, communication, technologies for women and girls in marginalized communities. Joining me for this discussion, we have Hazel Jojo, we have Mr. Lights, and we have Shamiso from FACET. Um, we're going to firstly be talking about the stories of young women from the countryside and the challenges that they have been facing, the science-related programs at tertiary institutions, and finally the barriers for young women to benefit from tech benefits. My first question will be addressed at Hazel. Hazel, taking into consideration the theme that we have been given this year, digital innovation and technology for gender equality, how important is this particular theme and specifically for young women in marginalized communities? Okay, thank you so much. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, perfect. Um, my name is Hazel. I am 24 and I am currently finishing my master's degree in social work. So I've always wanted to be a doctor. That's all I wanted, and my parents made me believe that I can be the doctor, because uh, I wanted to be a hero, and you know doctors save people. But as I grew up, I was told that mathematics is hard. Physics, ish, what's going on? Chemistry, my way, my atoms. So I grew apart from my dream, and then I then had to divert to social work. So as I was reflecting on this theme, I was just like, wow, I think this is important that we revisit this conversation, because we, some of us have been told that tech is not your issue, science programs are not your issue. You should stick to arts, and that's what we have done. So I think this is very important so that we unpack this important conversation. All right, perfect. I think um, a lot of us can resonate with that. When I got to high school, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a neurosurgeon. I'm going to study everything that has to do with sciences and all of that. But I think there's hope for all of us in the sense that I've seen a lot of Twitter threads about people transitioning from the career fields that they've been in, and then they want to get into coding and doing all kinds of things. Um, but our conversation today, as Hazel has already spoken about, is focusing particularly on the girl in marginalized communities, the girl in rural areas, because her plight is quite different from the average person. So according to statistics, um, a lot of women in the world actually, in high income countries such as the USA and France, more women than men are actually using the internet. However, in sub-Saharan Africa, particularly Zimbabwe, that's not the same case. Apparently up to 45% less women than um, men don't have access to um, internet and information communication technologies. And this is rife, particularly in marginalized communities. I have Delight here. Delight, um, what you're going through, um, whether you have access to these particular technologies. Where you're coming from. What are the girls doing where you're staying? And what are the problems? Okay, thank you. My name is Dilet Jareka. I am 22 old. Removes my way she became a young mother. 
and do not get a Kumazo rural district council. Kumazo and Dokune Retia Kanyanya in my early short marriages. Kumazo, our artist Kukwani Saguana, my phone, Kanama Tingatima, I see teas at Skukwani Sagubatana, so not it as a we my early child marriages are good to our good drop on my nanny got to call or it drop out of schools. So it are one is a good of a net zit so you go to Anushan Sasay technology. We to know who by the facet one on boys are good to batter, but I'm not sure so don't batter saying you could network your actual in one net. We are my phone at one segment thing band or no drum no Zimbabwe. All right. Thank you so much, Delight. Delight raises is a very important um, aspect of meaningful connectivity and meaningful access. Most of the times we talk about connectivity and we think it's simply about having a data bundle, having a cell phone, but do you have meaningful access? And the key element of meaningful access that she raises is actually the price of data. We know that in Zimbabwe, data is actually very pricey, but it's very shocking to hear that um, Sub-Saharan Africa has the highest rates or the highest data tariffs in the entire world with one gigabyte um, of data being priced at US dollar, $6.40. This is the average pricing in sub-Saharan Africa. So that's one of the major challenges. But let's come to you um, and speak to us more about um, access to internet, meaningful connectivity, because you work at FACET. You're directly working with Delight, directly working with other young women. What are the challenges that you have seen in that particular space? OK. Thank you very much, Nadia. Okay, thank you very much, Nadia. My name is Shami, so I'm from the Farming Community Educational Trust. Um, we are an organization which operates in Marshall and Central. Uh, we, operate, we operate particularly in Mazoe. And um, from, the, from the statistics, um, Mazoe, which is in Marsh Central District, has a 52% rate of uh, child marriages, meaning that um, the girls who are victims, the girls and young women who are victims of uh, child marriages um, drop out of school at a very young age. So that in itself will tell us that um, they really have not had the opportunity to learn more about um, technology. So one of uh, the challenges that uh, girls uh, in farming communities face is uh, the lack of education. If you are not educated, like uh, there is someone who's actually not able to read a mere text message. So how can that person be able to operate an advanced phone? So those are some of the challenges that are creating barriers to access to technology. It's mainly the issue of uh, access to education, and also there is the issue of poverty. Some young women and girls dropped, dropped out of school as early as grade seven because of uh, the issues to do with uh, finance, education finance, and that decided to stay at home. So when you, you find that when you stay at home, you will not be eager to really interact with um, the rest of the world and see what's going on. So you generally lose interest in uh, technology. Thank you so much for your um, answer, Shami. I particularly like the fact that you're focusing on barriers to access, and one of the major barriers to access is education. That is to say that if someone is not educated, then how are they going to be able to properly engage with information communication technologies? Coming to you, Hazel, um, Shamiso has raised a very important point about the barriers that are existing in education, and, or the lack of, the lack of education um, being a barrier. How do you think the country the women in this particular room today, and even the men, can engage with that particular problem and ensure that we solve the problem of a lack of um, ICTs in rural and marginalized communities. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd love to acknowledge the government um, on the efforts that it has done so far in yeah. terms of promoting affirmative action, uh, putting programs like STEM, and also other partners who are funding that program. Yeah. But I think more needs to be done in terms of the attitude that we have towards girls getting access to technology. Yeah. I think we need to focus more on partial socialization. I don't know where this idea of all oh, girls cannot do science program came from, 
but I was a victim of that because I was told that ungas gone came yo chimuka makuseni uchida kuchaira uchida kuti physics ungazodzikwanisa here and stuff like that so I think that we need to collaborate at some point and make sure that we are providing um, impartial socialization to the girls and we also need to make sure that we put um, technology devices in rural areas, in rural schools. I grew up in Nyanga, where at my school, even if I wanted to do actual science, or even if I, w I wanted to do physics, for example, there was no physics lab. So in as much as you have a dream, whether you're a boy or you're a girl, but the environment that you are in cannot support that dream, then I think we are going to a dead end. So we need more investment, we need more research, we need more funding, so that we put this, tech, like these guys are in Mazoe. Mazoe is not even far from Arari, and they do not have access to, you know, ICTs, internet, data. We can't be talking about that in 2023, especially in a country that is moving towards middle income in 2030. So I feel like we need more effort, we need more priority, we need to prioritize um, so that girls and also even boys have access to, 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 to internet. And I was also thinking about the affordability of data. Oh my God, I work virtually during the night, I work American hours. De I need to use data for me to have money and for me to pay rent. But data is so expensive. Mm -hmm. I had to call guys from Econet and I said, are you guys okay? You know what, as you're on that point, yeah. Ikenet just sent us a Happy Women's Month um, message. And I looked at it and I was shocked. Sent it to, to us and say, okay, you're going to reduce data tariffs. Because what's the point if the theme is digital and you can't yeah. give us uh, affordable data? Yeah, so we need, we need affordable data. We understand that things are, are hard in Zimbabwe. So maybe if the schools can also, you know, subsidize data for us. I'm a mm, master's student true. and I've been paying lots of fees. But, you know, I need data, and the school cannot provide data. So those who are going to school, at least the school needs to provide, you know, data and airtime and also... For me, I'm at Midland State University. Sometimes the Wi-Fi is not even there. And you're wondering, if I cannot get access to internet when I'm at school, how about someone who does not go to school? How about Precisely. someone who's at home? Precisely. Thank you so much for that wonderful insight, um, Hazel. Data prices are really, really high. Um, coming to you, Delight. The the government to help um, the situation of the girls, particularly the child mothers in Mazoe. Shingai to any government. Who collaboration between government, civil society, we have internet 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 that's, yeah. Sakatunichidotwa Thank you so much, Delight, for that insight. I often think about how in uh, growing up, you know, you'd have like pieces of meat and normally the father has to get the biggest piece of meat or gets two pieces of meat. And I always think about it like, okay, so when it comes to a cell phone or when it comes to connectivity, if a father has to get meat, 
then obviously if there's one phone or there's not enough phones, he is the person who's going to get it. The boy is going to get it because when it comes to meat, that's how it works and that's terrible. But coming to you, Shami, um, the final question that we have, you at FASED, there's the GIA Alliance, Girls Education Advocacy in the region. You're looking at different um, frameworks like National Development Strategy Number 1, CDAO. Can you take us into how the utilization of those frameworks will help us to achieve um, gender equality using innovation and um, gender uh, using in innovation and technology. Before you start, um, there's no such thing as the right to the internet. The right to the internet exists under the right to information or under the uh, freedom of, of expression. And I think one of the major things that we can all do here is to maybe advocate for there to be a right to the internet as that would help young women um, who can then come before the courts and say, hey, this is actually a right that is listed in our Bill of Rights. But yeah, you can answer as to the work that you have been doing. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Nadia, for that. But um, I know I'm going to answer your question totally wrong. Okay. As, facet, as Farming Community Educational Trust, apparently what we are doing is to advocate for the accessibility of uh, education to girls yes. and uh, young women in farming communities. To us, um, we, we want um, all the girls to remain in school. We even want um, the young mothers, the likes of uh, like, like Delight, to, to, to really have the chance to go back to school and actually learn more about uh, technology. Because she probably left school some seven or eight years ago when, when the country was not so advanced. So what we are advocating for is uh, for her to be able to just go back to school and really start afresh and continue with education, even with the others who are facing like financial challenges and um, other social challenges, what we, our desire is to have everyone in school so that they can actually learn about technology. They have the exposure to the external world. They know what to do with their lives. They, they, they know that uh, for some of the problems they face, uh, the assistance is just a click away. They need to learn more about uh, technology. They need to be digital despite um, all the discriminatory um, practices in their communities that say that uh, technology is strictly for men. All right. Thank you very much for your very correct answer. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me on this particular panel. Our call to action is to eliminate barriers to access for women and girls in marginalized communities. Thank you so much for giving us this time. Once again, happy International Women's Day to all of you.